Poor, poor Jane Foster. What? You don't know who Jane Foster is? Of course you do. She was a major character in two blockbuster Hollywood films, which, if you're watching this channel, you probably saw. Y you know, Jane Foster. World-traveling astrophysicist. No? Nothing? Alright, Thor's girlfriend. And that is the tragedy of Jane Foster. No matter how brilliant, bold, or beautiful they made her, she still fell in the shadow of a guy that could throw a hammer. <sighs> Despite being relegated to the ranks of the forgotten names of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, she's still a hero to some, specifically the rather niche audience of female astrophysicists, of which I am acquainted with a surprising number. One such science-minded lady asked if I could help her construct the fancy Asgardian dress worn in Thor 2, The Dark World. The metal part, specifically. Now before you all cry hypocrisy and start lighting your torches and carrying your pitchforks, I know, I know, I have said some nasty things in the past about sort of impractical fantasy armor. The thing is, this isn't armor. Jane Foster is not a combatant. She's a scientist. It seems that us guardians wear armor just as formal wear. How badass is that? So, this project starts off pretty much how most of mine have. Uh, hitting steel with a hammer a lot. Uh, it's a little bit odd though because making things form-fitting for ladies can be very challenging. Doubly so when the lady in question lives half a continent away. So I have to go based off measurements rather than being able to sort of slam it against her chest every now and then to see if it fits. You might think that having only one boob in the breastplate would be helpful, because I wouldn't have to worry too much about symmetry. The problem is, if I get the size a little bit wrong or the positioning a bit off, she can't just sort of adjust herself into the cups, uh, because only one of them will be held in. There are a few components of this piece that I haven't really done in other projects. The first is folding. You can get a pretty interesting effect by folding metal back and forth, and that creates sort of a false lame effect, where it looks like different layers are stacked up without having to worry about articulation or cutting extra pieces. The advantage of the folds in this piece is they're going to provide a more comfortable surface for the skin to sit against, or the dress to sit against in this case. Uh, if I'd actually made lames, there's a pretty good chance for pinching as she sort of moved her ribcage around during the day. One of the other things I had to do more carefully on this project is roll the edge. Most of the things I make have the edges folded in, which is pretty easy and you don't have to worry too much about what the very edge of the metal looks like in that case, because it's hidden behind. This is why I had to use more of a blacksmithing technique, applying localized heat and rolling the edge a little bit at a time, getting it to curl over nicely. I then had to polish off the horrible scorch marks with a wire brush, which is a step I can usually skip if I'm just doing sheet metal work. The most interesting thing I had to do with this breastplate that I haven't done before is etch in a filigree pattern across the entire thing. I started by cutting out little filigree chunks and segments on a silhouette and laying them down in a pattern that I felt was aesthetically pleasing. I then masked up the rest of the piece with electrical tape and vinyl to keep the etchant off the rest of the surface. Now, etching can be a pretty nasty process. There are a lot of really toxic and corrosive chemicals that you use to do these kinds of things. Steel, though, you can cheat with if you have the right supplies. All you really need is a decent power supply and some salt water. If you apply a voltage across uh, two steel plates submerged in salt water, just table salt, uh, it'll set up an electrolytic reaction where the chlorine ions will be attracted to the positive terminal? I gotta look it up. Chlorine ion. To etch the breastplate, I submerged it in a sodium chloride solution, that's table salt in water, and attached it to a power supply that would give me a constant 5 amps. Uh, the breastplate itself was connected to the positive terminal, which would attract the chlorine ions in the water and thus degrade and dissolve the ex exposed steel. And the negative terminal was attached to another steel plate, which I had submerged in the water, but not touching the breastplate. Uh, otherwise, it would just short circuit and blow my power supply. I left that in there for about an hour, 
which created a lovely bucket of sludge. Uh, it's kind of gross. <clears throat> but once removed from the ugly bucket of sludge, rinsed off and had the masking pulled away, it left a lovely uh, sort of half millimeter or one thirty second thumb an inch uh, etching through across the entire plate where the filigree was exposed. The final step was just to strap it up, which I just used some leather straps and buckles, one across around the rib cage, one over the shoulder, connecting to that lower one. The final product is a beautifully etched single boob breastplate.